Today we're starting uh, the presentation on objection handling. First, before we even go into objection handling, we want to uh, distinguish the definition of objection and condition. And that very common misunderstanding that the condition can be misunderstood with objection. So let's, let's discover what the uh, condition stands for. Uh, condition must be absolute. We cannot overcome a condition. So a desire could be an option for a condition. Let's say I just bought a house. I have no desire to buy another one. Sold the house and I'm happy renting. I spent all my money. I just lost all the money in casino. I don't have money. That, that could be a condition, a financial condition. I don't have money to buy. There's nothing you can do about it. Legal. Well, I, I'm not the homeowner. There is nothing you can do about it. You call for sale by owners, um, asking them, are you the decision maker? Are you the homeowner? No, I'm the sister. I'm the brother. I'm just making this ad for my father who doesn't have internet connection. I make no legal decision on this sale. So that's legal desire. I, I just bought a house. I'm not interested. You can't overcome a, an objection on, I'm not interested in selling. I just bought it. I'm happy here. All right, so we need to examine uh, the objections we are getting to find out if they're condition or objection. So I hope everything is clear with conditions that we cannot overcome uh, and we cannot move forward. However, if we find that we dealing with uh, objections, they also can be conditional. And this is where the trick is. A lot of uh, agents misunderstand uh, conditional objection and condition. So I wanna give you a couple examples of conditional objection. I'm an agent myself. I'm an agent myself. A lot of agents, all right, you're an agent. Goodbye. I don't wanna deal with an agent. But if you probe uh, your uh, opponent on the phone or when you speak and ask them, well, you're an agent. In what state are you an agent? In a lot of times, you're gonna hear, I'm, st I'm in the state of I don't know, Washington, I'm in the state of Texas. Or, I'm an agent myself. Are you actively licensed? No, I had a license 12 years ago. So that, that is conditional objection that pushes you back. And another conditional objection could be, uh, I need to um, sell this house in order to buy the next one. So that's another conditional objection. I, it could be mixed with financial condition. I don't have money, but if it's a conditional objection, I need to sell first, then you step in as a real estate professional finding the solution for your prospect. If you would deal with uh, people who come to us and they like, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to buy, I'm ready to sell. This would be way too easy and we would be making money uh, that we don't necessarily deserve. Our job as real estate agent is to handle the conditional and then we're going to be talking about emotional uh, conditions, uh, emotional objections. And they all break down into two categories, always. And at the end of this call, we will be practicing. You'll throw objections on me and you notice that they all based on either greed or fear. These two emotions, they only motivate prospects to throw an objection at you. Let me give you an example of greed. I want to save on commission. I'm greedy. I want to keep all the money in my pocket. Is this bad? No, it's not. Everyone wants to keep money in the pocket. I want to keep all my money in the pocket. However, it, it comes from greed. I don't want to give you money uh, or fear. I'm scared to work with you and agent. My listing was expired last month. I got the whole ton of calls. I'm scared to step on the same, uh, on the same mistake again. So I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared to move. I'm scared to sell my house. I'm scared to move out of state. I'm scared through the process that someone gonna walk into my house and steal stuff from me. These are fair objections that based on emotions, on fear. So we need to know how to overcome this because 
almost every objection can be overcome. Even if an objection where you gonna hear, well, I'm an agent in this state, I hold license, it's still not a condition. You might wanna ask, how long you've been selling real estate? If you hear, well, that's my first house. Well, do you really wanna practice on your own property and market and sell it for less? You wanna let the professional handle it, sell it for more, you practice a little more, you might wanna hire Roman Ivanov as your coach to be better with marketing and sales, and at that point you, you'll uh, make money on commission when I can help you sell, or vice versa. I sell 300 homes a month. I'm, I'm the biggest broker in the state. Do you really wanna spend time selling your property, or you have established all well machine uh, selling properties, and this home will be only on MLS when I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get your home sold in the shortest period of time for the most money possible. So that's another example that that objection can be also handled even if an agent in your state licensed and active. We absolutely have to probe or test it if it's conditional or emotional, if it's conditional how we can overcome that condition. It might be time, it might be money. Let's say another conditional, I, I owe too much money on this property and I cannot sell it because of that. Is this condition financial or it's condition as an, a conditional objection? It is conditional objection. Because if I would sell your home for 500K, would you be open to move forward with me as an agent who would represent you and get the most money possible? So that objection can be overcome. You never know what the home will sell for. If this gentleman paid that much for it, you might, want, you might find someone else who would also do the same. So with all this being said, let's move forward to how to handle. That's the whole purpose of this presentation. When we determine that yes, this is objection, this is not condition, if this is condition, you're gonna say, thank you, have a great day, I'll, I wish you best of luck. If it's an objection, we're moving into handling objection. Uh, first, we wanna determine who on a disk profile are we talking to? And depends on their social styles, and I hope you all read social style book that I recommended, and you all can determine driver, um, analytical, amiable, or expressive on the disk profile, but this is how we're gonna handle the objection from that point on. We wanna acknowledge their objection. And I hear this a lot, especially on, from agents who just joined my coaching when they, they not with me for quite some time that, well, great, and, and moving forward. Well, great is not necessarily acknowledgement. First, we need to deeply understand and what we call actively listen to what they have to say. Let's, let's give you, let me give you an example. Uh, objection, uh, emotional greed. Let me give you a basic objection. For sale by owner, doesn't want to pay commission. Well, I don't want to list with an agent because 3% on the listing side, that's a ton of money. I can list it on Zillow and sell it myself. I've done it in the past, Mr. Seller. I totally understand that 3% of $300,000 is a lot of money. And if I were you, I would love to save 9,000. So that really gives them the opportunity to connect with you. This is where you build in the rapport, showing them that you really with them. You're not arguing with them that no, it's you, you're doing wrong. You, you're selling to yourself and you go in the route that you're gonna lose at the end. Even we know that they would. We acknowledge, yes, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. We're repeating them in the same tonality. Again, make sure that you use the right tonality, the body language, and the same words. Again, 70% of conversation is tonality. 23% is body language. And only 7% is the words that you say. So. If you want to focus on 7%, your chances are less than 10% of closing the prospect. Make sure you use the same body language they do. If they're expressing their emotions with gestures, 
with a lot of mimic, you want, you want to copy that. If they are uh, speaking loud, you want to speak loud to them as well. If they're using slang, it is appropriate to match their if they're going to be like, hey, dude, and you're going to be, okay, sir, well, there is a dismatch, right? So we want, to, we want to acknowledge it in the exact same way they said, with a little bit further explanation that you're at the same point. You're actively hearing them. Then you want to examine it. You want to test how they come to this uh, objection. Well, again, let me give you an example. Um, well, I want to I want to save on commission. I want to uh, save nine thousand dollars on the sale of house. I need to move to Florida. All right. Well, if you would sell your house for three hundred thousand, uh, how would you feel being in Florida? Is this three percent stopping you from being in Florida? You want to ask this open-ended question to examine their motivation. We want. We always want to come up with follow-up. So I totally understand $9,000 is a lot of money. So if you would sell your house for $300,000, would you still sell, move to Florida? Yes, I would, absolutely. And then you, you make them come to a conclusion. Uh, you don't want to give them the close. All right, well, sign the contract with me. Let's set up an appointment. So what benefits would you get if we would meet today at 3 p.m. so I can show you how to get to Florida in the next 90 days and pocket your $300,000 in uh, sales price. How would you feel? Well, I would feel terrific. All right, great. So if you're gonna feel terrific, what's stopping you from setting up an appointment? What's stopping you from setting up an appointment? Not necessarily let's set up an appointment. What's stopping you? Well, nothing. Nothing. I want to feel terrific. I want to be in Florida in the next 90 days and get 300,000. Let's set up an appointment. We want to make sure that we're handling this objection according to their disk profile. So if we handle an objection with analytical, we obviously want to focus on the money. All right. So if I would be talking to analytical, I would say, great, you, you want to save uh, $9,000 on commission. Um, is this what's stopping you from Florida? How much would you spend on, on the move? How much is your next house would be? All right, great. So if I can show you a way of getting uh, $9,000 or more on the uh, sale of this property, would that make sense for you to sell this home with me, move to Florida? And what is stopping you from setting up an appointment and, and looking at these numbers? If, if you're talking about the driver, you want to be straightforward and say, all right, you want to be in Florida. I know exactly how to get it done for you. And again, do you want to get this done and sell and move to Florida in the next two days? You want to get stuck here for quite some time, miss the hot spring market. And how would you feel in Florida when you're going to be all said and done? Are you going to be calling me saying, Roman, you got me another $12,000 in sale price. And I'm happy here sipping on margaritas, scrolling through Z uh, Zillow, looking for a new home. Or are you going to call and blame me that I sold it for too much? With Amiable, how would you feel if you would sell your home with me today uh, or in the next 90 days, move to Florida? Would you feel great? Would you feel released from all that stress and burden you're experiencing throughout the sale? So what's stopping you from finishing this emotional burden, this emotional stress with lots of agents calling you? Have you got, how many, oh, how many calls did you, did you get this week? 12 calls, wow, that's a lot of calls. And all these agents, they wanna get the, the food in the door just to convince you to list. Would you like to stop it? How would you feel when all this is over and you we really focus on getting your home sold? I would feel, I will feel great. Well, why wouldn't we set up an appointment so you feel great? You stop this emotional, stress, you stop these emotions uh, being all over you, you you're almost uh, about to cry, I can stop it today at four, I can set up an appointment and help you get out of it. With uh, expressive, I would say, just imagine, we're going to sell your house for the most money possible in the neighborhood. <laughs> you're going to call all your friends and we're going to post it on your social media. So 
your friend's going to know that you sold your house for the record price in the neighborhood. How's that going to make you feel? Would that feel exciting? Yes, it would cost you 3% on the seller side. However, I'm going to sell it for $25,000 more. How is that going to make you feel? All right. So that's how I would handle the, the um, techniques uh, going from acknowledgement to examine to ask for a conclusion. And you want them to give you an answer on, yes, I want to do that. Uh, we want to we wanna ask them uneven questions. Uneven questions are, would you like to keep your property on the market and sell your house for 300000 and have all these calls uh, from agents who don't really have buyers, they only want to get uh, the foot in the door to list your house, or you want to get your home sold, move you to Florida, sell it for twenty five grand more, and start scrolling through Zillow searching for homes in Orlando. What would be better for you? Do, it's, it's like another example. Uh, do, do, do you want to be fat or you want to eat healthy? Do you want to be rich or you want to work hard, right? So these are, these are not equal questions. These are yes, 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 absolutely. So moving, moving forward to bonus close. So we want to focus on the future with a beautiful word, imagine. Imagine, imagine yourself being in Florida in the next 90 days. How, how would you feel? Where, where would you live? What would you do? What are your friends going to think about you? Are they going to be jealous if I'm talking too expressive? Are they going to be jealous you being in Florida? Are they going to be exciting for you? How much money, if I'm talking too analytical, how much money are you going to net after selling this house for cash, getting the mortgage, uh, you're going to keep money in the bank, where would you invest this money that you have left over being in Florida in a nicer weather, all right? So we focus on the future with a beautiful word, imagine. Imagine you being there. Imagine you selling the house, your investment property for $30,000 more over your uh, projected sale. How would you feel? Would you, where would you invest the money? Imagine if you have extra 30 grand to invest, where would you invest? Stock market, I don't know, another real estate investment. Would you invest in crypto? Open-ended question, it comes back to this. Again, we wanna we want push this future into where, where would you go next? What would be the next step? Tell me, tell me what would be the next step in order for us to get to the future. Make sense? And then we, we want to wrap this all up with certainty. We, we still want to get the answer on the open-ended question and then wrap this up with certainty. So if I can show you a way selling your house for $330,000 uh, in 90 days, moving you to Florida. Does it make sense for us to get together today at four so I can show you exactly how to get this done? That's the certainty you wanna to bring to the table to show them that you know what you're doing. I don't care if you have three sales or 300 sales. The emotional certainty, the emotional uh, power will win over the logic all the time. If you come in and, and you know exactly what needs to be done, you're positive and certain, you acknowledge what they say, you know the path to get them to where they want to be, and you show them that path. There is no way they can um, go back to fear. You're absolutely going to overcome fear with your certainty. They're agreed? Same thing. With your certainty, I can get you $30,000 more. You're saving nine. If I, if I would give you nine and you give me 30, would that be equal? No, it wouldn't be. So why wouldn't we get together so I can show you how you can make $21,000 in 20 minutes? Mm -hmm.